Hello friends and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, then welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Nate and I do a lot of reaction videos comparing the United States to pretty much the, the rest of the world. And in today's reaction video, I'm not really going to be reacting to the United States compared to somewhere else, but I did find a video. Uh, it was recommended to me uh, from one of my followers here on YouTube that I check out his playlist. He does have some videos on Germany, and this happens to be of Rhineland Pfalz, and that is the state where my wife is from. It's a gorgeous state in Germany. Uh, I think the English version of that is Rhineland Palatinate, which I don't even know if that's how you say it. I don't. It's always been Rhineland Pfalz. That's what it is. So in today's video, I'm going to be reacting to a video about that. And hopefully it's as good as I think it's going to be. But before we get started, I do have a new beer today. This is coming from Germany. This is Astra Irtip, I'm assuming, uh, mit Liebe Gebraut im Herzen Hamburgs. So, brewed with love in the heart of Hamburg. Uh, it says authentic beer of punks, pirates, and poets from the St. Pauli neighborhood of Hamburg. So, it looks like it's a Pilsner. Uh, I don't know. I've never had one of these, so I have a nice glass that says to beer or not to beer. And yes, I will be to beer. So, ooh, ooh. definitely, definitely a pills. Yes. Let's try this out. Ooh, that is yellow. Can already see it. Definitely not a huge Pilsner fan. I'm going to tell you that right now. Uh, I do like some. I do enjoy a Pilsner once in a while. Um, look at the color. Can you see the color of that? Man, that is... It looks like something that I won't uh, name here on the channel. But... Definitely a pills. Not bad. Uh, again, a pills, Pilsner. Uh, I'm not a big fan of these. It reminds me a lot of like the Budweiser and and things like that. So I probably wouldn't buy a case of this. Uh, but one. While I'm watching a video on Ryland Faults, it won't be too bad. So, while I have a couple more drinks of this, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Das ist Ryland Faults. Okay, sorry to pause the video 30 seconds in, but they showed some vineyards, uh, some grape vines there on the hillside. And while Germany is known for beer, uh, they aren't the country with the most consumption of beer. I believe they're fourth on the list, and I believe the Czech Republic is number one. Uh, Germany has a lot of vineyards, and Rhineland Faults has a lot of them as well. And so I don't know how many people who have not visited Germany or don't know much about Germany know that, yes, they drink beer, but they also drink a lot of wine and a lot of really, really good wine. Some of my favorite are the Riesling um, line of wines, uh, but... Rhineland Faults has a lot of vineyards, and I remember driving around 
uh, to and from places, and it's just these hillsides terraced in these uh, vines, you know, the grape uh, vines. Um, very, very delicious wine. So I just saw that at the beginning, wanted to throw that out there. Is that Eder Oberstein? No, that's not Eder Oberstein. Uh, there's a, a castle like this in Eder Oberstein that is built into the mountain. Is that it? I don't remember it being such a pointed rock, but I guess if you're like this big, you somebody let me know in the comments where this is. I don't think so. I wish I could see more of the town down below because I know that you had to climb quite a few stairs to get up to it. Uh, and I have been there before. I don't know if this is it or not, but I, I think it's just awesome that they created this castle into the side of the mountain. Uh, just the engineering feat of that alone is amazing. Uh, but let me know down in the comments where this is. If it is Eder Oberstein, then I don't remember it being such a pointed peak right behind the castle, but it's been many, many years since I've been there, so this very well could be, could be it. Go back. I mean, can you imagine building something like this? Not only just the, the structure itself, but look where it's located. Quite literally on the cliff right there. And to build this in a way that they did back in the day without modern day machinery is just absolutely amazing you know that's one of the things when every time I go to a castle I always find myself thinking back to when it was built and how it was built and the people that were involved in building it and how many years and years and years and decades sometimes generations it took to build these because those are individual stones you know they didn't have what we have today and can and put up a whole wall you know, in a matter of hours. These are individual stones that they had to put in its correct place. Um, and right on the side of the river there, I do remember my wife and I took a trip with my mom and grandma to Rudesheim, uh, and we took a little boat ride. It was, you know, like a castle tour. Uh, so all these castles were on the side of the mountain as you're going down the river. Another place with a lot of excellent wine, but just these <laughs> these castles on on the side of the hill that just have a view of the entire valley. Uh, very good defensive position uh, back in the day. You know, up high, you can see down below. It's much better to have a, a position much higher than the enemy. Uh, so that's why a lot of these castles were built up on top of mountain you know, peaks, uh, so they can see the approaching enemy and defend themselves. But it's just amazing how these things were built.
I have seen this in books or, you know, somewhere. Uh, <laughs> how it's built right into the middle of the river and obviously the water level has not been that high for quite some time because if you drew a line across the road and half the buildings on the shoreline would be underwater as well. But I think it's, I don't even, what's the point? What was, is, uh, I don't understand what this is for in the middle of a river, uh, but you can see how it was built like the front end of a boat to, to cut through the water. You know, if it was a straight wall right there, it would eventually crumble the water, the force of the water would um, destroy it. So they pointed it so the water goes around it. If anybody knows anything about this, leave it in the comments because I don't know what the point of this is unless it's some sort of <clears throat> like a light tower almost or, you know, something to signal ships or uh, something. But very unique, very unique right here. Another thing with these castles, you know, at night when they have the lights shining on them, they, they look otherworldly. They just, they look incredible. I was going to say they, they look like they're from another time, which obviously they're from another time way back, you know. <clears throat> but I think it's the way they're lit. They, they look mysterious. They look um, like almost haunted in a sense, uh, which, you know, they're great in the daytime, but you need to go visit some of these places at night too, and it's just amazing. And the, the fountains, I think every semi populated area that has a square, you know, with shops and stuff has a fountain um, and sometimes they can be a little on the creepy side, uh, very intricately detailed. Uh, this one, you can see all the, all the, the statues there. And in the background, that is my absolute favorite style of building. I think they're the timber frame. Is that what you call it? Uh, where you can see the exposed beams, uh, and then it's kind of like stucco, uh, in between. I think it's just, it's so ornate it's just you, you don't see that here in the US um, and every time I see something like that I just imagine walking into it and seeing the exposed beam everywhere like the dark wood beams uh, just like you're stepping back in time which a lot of these you really are because they are quite old uh, but I absolutely love that style of building I'd love to live in one if it was renovated to the point where it was more modern on the inside, you know, for heating, cooling, uh, that sort of thing, which a lot of them are. <clears throat> uh, but correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong here, uh, my German friends, but I believe a lot of places, if you renovate, you're not allowed to alter the face of the building at all. I mean, you can fix and patch things here and there, but it's not like somebody can come along, buy one of these, and then completely board up the side and make it like shingles or anything like that. That you're required to leave the original um, aesthetic on the outside. Now the inside, you can renovate more modern. You know, obviously you're going to need modern plumbing and electricity and update the windows and things like that. But I believe the outside, there's a law where you have to. It's almost like here in the United States, if something's deemed historic, then you can't alter the outside of the building. You can't change the structure, the bones of the place, but you can, you know, obviously, like I said, modernize the inside. So let me know in the comments if I'm way off base or if there's, it's something like that or exactly what the law is.
Here's another one. I mean, look at the peaks, how steep they are. And it's just straight up. You know how many rocks it took to build something like this? Ah, it's absolutely incredible. And the way the sun's hitting it is just perfect. I love streets like that. You have the timber frame or whatever it's called on the sides, cobblestone road. I, just, I love walking down streets like that. And then if there's a little cafe, it looks like maybe down here on the right, um, just sitting outside watching people walk by. So peaceful. Some of the best time, can you hear the ice cream truck outside? Uh, some of the best times just sitting out, nice day, enjoying a, a brat or a beer, uh, and just chatting with friends or family. Man, I wish they did this more here, where it was more social gatherings like this. I know there are places in the United States that do this, but it seems like even in the smaller cities, smaller towns, you have this um, area and you don't everywhere here. I don't have that here in Buckeye and there's very few places that this, that has this much space in, you know, around Phoenix. There are places where you can go and eat outside and stuff like that, but it's, it's just not the same. It's not the same.
Well, that really made me homesick, if you will. Uh, Rhineland Pfalz is absolutely beautiful. Uh, there are many beautiful places in Germany, but being that I've spent the majority of my time in Germany in Rhineland Pfalz, that's what I know the best. And it is absolutely gorgeous. Even if uh, in the winter time, when it gets cold and, and gray, the landscape is still beautiful. You still have these wonderful places you can go. And hopefully this summer, I will be back in Rhineland Pfalz. We are planning another trip to Germany in July for my sister-in-law's birthday. We are all gonna celebrate. And so hopefully we'll be there for about three weeks, uh, starting around mid-July through the end of the month. I can't wait to go. I can't wait to visit some of these places um, and others. We are planning another trip. Just my wife and I, like we did last year when we went to Switzerland. This year, uh, Dolomites are on the radar in Italy, so that might be kind of fun. But I really enjoyed this video of just kind of a video tour around Rhineland Falls. Now, if I'm going to be critical, some of the drone shots could have been a lot better. A little jerky, too quick. Some of the transitions were a little weird for this type of video, but I'm not here to criticize the movie making capability of whoever put this on, but it could have been a little smoother in places. Uh, but overall, great little slideshow of Rhineland Fault. So I hope you enjoyed the video just as much as I did. Please leave your comments down below if you've seen any of these places. I am going to look them up a little bit to see uh, if I was right on a couple of them. Uh, but as always, thank you so much for watching and until next time, we'll catch you later. Bye.